Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Rakak Dash. <coughs> Excuse me. All praises and glory is definitely due, especially in the times we're in. So, the inspiration of this video comes from uh, a video that was put up by um, Elder Karatza of uh, GMS Vegas Sit Downs. This is his channel here. The name of the video is entitled Dr. Brown. Yeah, we're going at Dr. Brown again. He's the he's t-shirt the of the week, uh, so to speak. Uh, Dr. Brown, none of you were ever white. Get it right. And that's right. <laughs> well, you know, Dr. Brown always gets it wrong because he's a clown, you know? Dr. Brown the Clown, Dr. Michael Quaz Brown. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, uh, affectionate names for that for that uh, detractor. He's one of our detractors. Anyway, um, I'm just going to jump right into the video <clears throat> and uh, do uh, slight responses to what is said. So without further ado, let's get into it. One of the worst of the black Hebrew Israelite lies is the idea that Esau, so Jacob's twin brother, Jacob's older twin brother and the son of Isaac. Notice he says black Hebrew Israelite again. All right. Black, black Hebrew Israelite. And Rebecca, that Esau was somehow white and that white people today are descendants of Esau. Esau is not white. Esau is red. Let's go to scripture. This is why when we teach, we say so-called white people. I guess he missed that part. But let's see what color Esau was. All right, Genesis 25 and 25. See, that's that demonization that these clowns try to come up with to, to demonize the word of the Lord and at the same time try to demonize the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son the messages that he have sent, which is us, the prophets. Genesis 25 and 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So he didn't come out white. He came out red. And this is why when we teach, we say so-called white people. Unlike you, which we believe you know, but you're not going to bring out that information. You're supposed to be some scholar. Or maybe you don't know. The, the uh, concept of so-called white people or white people, let me just say white people. We say so-called white people when we teach because there's no such thing. But the concept of white people, that came about in the early 1600s. And by 1681, it became a concept, the concept called white people. Okay? That came about in the early 1600s. All right, and as a matter of fact, um, in the video, uh, the uh, brother Karadza brings out uh, some of that information, which the first to bring it out was the brother from Chicago, uh, Elder, uh, Elder, can't believe I forgot the brother's name right now. Hopefully his name will come back to me. He's a beloved brother. And I'm pretty ashamed to forget his name. Malcolm. I had a brain fart for a minute. You know, it happens to the best of us. The, the brother Malcolm, which I've actually met him. Real cool brother. Real humble brother. Real humble brother. I think anybody who, any Israelite who met that brother would say the same thing. That he's very humble. And, um... Yeah, he was the first to bring out that information concerning. Well, he was the first that I heard, the first Israelite that I heard to bring out the information concerning so-called white people, where the concept of white people came from. Let's put it to you this way. Before the early 1600s, there wasn't no such thing as white people. Okay? So that's the first thing that has to be destroyed, this thing called white people. And then... This thing called black people. There's no such thing as black people. We are different shades of brown. While the so-called white man is different shades of red. Okay. Now we even teach that you can have Israelites. 
that look like Edomites. We teach this. However, Vocab Malone and Dr. Michael Quaz Brown, the clown, they don't mention that because they're trying to push that narrative that we're that you know we're so-called racist. Which the only race we're a racist is one for his race. The only race we care about is the race of the Israelites. We're pro-Israelite, man. We're not uh, so-called racist in the sense of the world, which the world is ignorant. Why do you think it says in um, Isaiah 60 and 1, gross darkness to people? The majority of people on the planet Earth are lost. They don't know what the hell is going on. Okay? This is why this is written. Isaiah 60 and 1, it says, arise and shine. For thy light is come. It's talking to us that know this knowledge is truth. And guess what? If you don't have this knowledge is truth, you really don't have anything. You really, you really, in the eyes of you, how about Shemi you're, you're, a, you're a stupefied moron if you don't have this knowledge is truth. I'm gonna say it again. In the eyes of you, how about Shemi you are a stupefied moron if you don't have this truth. You're, you're what, um, like the Lord said when, when. Uh, the Lord asked this individual to follow him, and the individual said, well, let, can I go bury my father first? And what, what was the Lord's response? Let the dead bury their dead. Now, can a dead person bury another dead person? Of course, the answer is no. He meant dead from the neck up, and that's the majority of these people on the planet Earth. They are dead from the neck up because they don't have this knowledge, this truth. Again, if you don't have this knowledge, this truth, you are dead from the neck up. All right, as the scripture have said, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain where? In the congregation of the dead. Again, you are dead from the neck up if you don't have this knowledge, this truth. And the, the truth is the majority of the people on the planet Earth is dead from the neck up concerning this knowledge, this truth, because they don't have it. So again, Isaiah 60 and 1, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. We have this knowledge, this truth. That's the glory of the Lord, right? For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. What do you think it means, the darkness shall cover the earth? Ignorance. And I dare say stupidity. Ignorance and stupidity has covered the earth. Very few people know this knowledge, this truth. Very few people are truly enlightened. If you have this knowledge, this truth, you are truly enlightened. You know what's going on. And not only that, you know both sides. You know the side of righteousness and you know the side of wickedness. You are truly enlightened. You are truly illuminated. You're the real Illuminati, as it were, if you know this knowledge, this truth. Guaranteed, okay? For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people. There you go. And that's talking about all people on the planet Earth. The majority of the people on the planet Earth. There's somewhere between darkness and gross darkness. What do you think gross darkness mean? Meaning they're totally lost. Totally clueless to what's going on. Okay? Many of them, their, their, their interests are in things of the world. But as it is written, the fashion of this world shall pass away. Many of these morons, they, they glorify in, the, in, in this world, the fashion of this world. But it's clearly written in the scriptures, the fashion of this world shall pass away. So how much, their knowledge of this world, how much, how much is that going to really benefit them when, when crunch time comes? When the Lord comes with those holy angels to bring an end to this society, an end to this world, how much is the knowledge of this world going to benefit these people? These people that are so-called, quote-unquote, successes in this world. How much is that going to benefit them when Yahweh Shai comes with the angels to destroy the society? That's why the Bible say that they're in gross darkness. They don't know what's going on. All right, there's a scripture where it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The majority of the people on the planet Earth don't have the fear of the Lord. They don't even know the Lord, especially our people. Jeremiah 4 and 22 my people are Sardish children. Sardish means stupid. They have none understanding. They do not know me. The Lord said that. And that's the majority of his people, which are the Israelites. Hell, for, for that matter, they don't even know that they're Israelites. They don't even know their, nas their true nationality. They still cling to the lies that their oppressor or the, or the slave master gave them. 
telling them that they're black. Now he tells them that they're African American. They gobble it up like candy. Man, the majority of these people of the world are gone, man. That's why it says that here, Isaiah 60 and 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So bringing, bringing back to the original point, there is no such thing as black people. There is no such thing as white people. Okay, let me say that one more time so you can hear what I'm saying. There is no such thing as black people. We're not black. We're different shades of brown. There's no such thing as white people. They're not white. They're different shades of red. And their true nationality is Esau, Edom, like I just read in Genesis 25. That concept of that construct concept of white people, that didn't come about until the early 1600s. And you'll see ample proof of that in this lesson. That's what inspired me to do this lesson. And this goes back to the covering cast in the same book of Isaiah. The Lord said he's going to destroy that covering cast that's over all nations. What is the covering cast? That's those fake names that the wicked elite put on all these nations to hide them from their true nationality. And at the same time hide uh, from people his true nationality. That is Esau, Edom. This is it right here, Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain, meaning this government, who is the he? The heavenly father, Yahweh. And he's sending back his son, Yahweh Shai, to do it. 1 Corinthians 15 and, uh, what is that, 23 or 24. When Yahweh Shai puts down all rule and authority and power, right? And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. Yeah, all these fake names that are put on people to hide them from their true nationality. Japanese, Chinese, white people, black people. They were the, what was the name of that clown that came up with? There was five races, the yellow race. <laughs> yellow people, that, that's supposed to be the so-called Chinese and Japanese. They don't look yellow to me. You know, this is the covering cast that the Bible is talking about, people. You know, white people, black people, right? I guess the so-called Puerto Ricans, they're supposed to be the brown people. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now, there are different shades of brown people. The so-called black man is brown. He's not black. He's brown. And the so-called white man is red. He's not white. He's red. Now, even in the movie X, they show you why you have so-called white people and you have so-called black people. Once again, the wicked is trying to say that they're precious, that they're innocent, that they're righteous. <laughs> And then they look at us and they call us wicked, black, you're black, which means negative, void of light, wicked, sullen, gloomy. They showed you that clearly in the movie X. Also in the movie uh, Cry Biko with the same actor, Denzel Washington. All right? So it's high time to wake out of sleep, man. Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. There you go. And the veil that is spread over all nations, yet yeah, which, which attributes to their gross darkness, their darkness and gross darkness. That's one of the reasons why people are so lost, because that, that covering cast is over them, which was put on them by the wicked elite. Esau, the, the, the deceiver, the forger of lies. Remember that in my last video, Job 13 and 4? You were forgers of lies. That's what this man has done. When he took over the planet Earth underneath the Borgia family, and it's no coincidence the Borgia family was called the first crime family, one of the things they were uh, uh, instrumental in was creating lies, creating deception, lies. The Borgia family was known for that, lies and deception. As a matter of fact, that's what uh, the book, uh, The Prince by Machiavelli, uh, the, the book was about Chasere Borgia, he was all about deception, all right? Deception and treachery and lies. So that's what this man is all about. And Dr. Michael Quas Brown, he's no different. He's about deception and lies, okay? So let's get back to the video. We'll bring this back a little. Twin brother, Jacob's older twin brother and the son of Isaac and Rebecca, that Esau was somehow white 
and that white people today... Esau was not white, he was red. He should have said so-called white. Descendants of Esau, also known as Edom. They are. They are. Even the, even, um, the top banking families, which are so-called white people, let's start with the Rothschilds, they know that their line goes back to Esau, Edom. In the document, uh, the master plan of the illuminated Rothschilds, I can give you a few citations that back that up. The master plan of the illuminated Rothschilds, in that article, Ron Patton interviews Marion Knox, in that article, and I've done videos on it, you've seen that information, if you watch, if you're familiar with my videos. Uh, in that article, it mentions how the Rothschilds know that they're of the house of Esau, but at the same time, to show you that deception, they're trying to claim the house of Jacob. All right, look, the, the Bible says that uh, two nations, matter of fact, you cannot claim the house of Esau and the house of Jacob at the same time. Let me show you why I say this. In the book of Genesis, the uh, 25th chapter, the 23rd verse, it says two nations, two separate nations. It is right here. Because there was a, a, a struggling a struggling going on in the womb of Rebekah like Elder Pastor calls it, a death match between Jacob, uh, Jacob and Esau. It was like a death match going, right? And Rebecca wanted to know what the hell was going on in her womb. Let's pick it up from there, Genesis 25 and 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, meaning answered his prayer, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. So she got pregnant, right? And the, chil the children struggled together within her. And there's been a struggle ever since between us Israelites and the Edomites. We're never going to get along. It's impossible. There's been a struggle to this very day. That's why we can't get along with the Edomites. And that's why they can't get along with us. It goes back to the en enmity. When you, you go further back in the book of Genesis around the third chapter, Beginning in the second, going into the third chapter, the Lord said he would put enmity. Look that word up, enmity. That's another word for hatred. Between the seed of the serpent, which would later be known as Esau, Edom, and the seed of the woman, which later would be known as the Israelites. So there's always been that struggle, that animosity, that hatred. So we're reading it here. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? Yeah, she wanted to know what was going on in her womb. And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Two separate nations. So how the hell can the Rothschilds... Now, this is according to the document, uh, the master plan of the illuminated Rothschilds. How the hell can the Rothschilds claim they're of the house of Esau and then at the same time claim they're of the house of Jacob when they're two separate nations I'm reading it to you right here that shows you their deception they're a bunch of deceivers the Rothschild family Genesis 25 and 23 and the Lord said unto her two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated so uh you know, Jacob and Esau was separated, okay, shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. That's, they were separated by their different ways, their different characteristics. Also, by the way they look, because Jacob came out normal with pigment, brown pigment, but Esau came out red without no pigment. The color of his blood showed forth through his skin. So they were separated down the line. Okay, the uh, two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right, and that's the future prophecy. The, the uh, elder shall serve the younger. The elder would be Esau. He came out first and then Jacob. That makes him the elder. So eventually these Edomites will be our slaves. During the Dark Ages, they were our slaves for a period of time. But guess what? They're going to be our slaves again perpetually. And that's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be in slavery underneath us.
And there's there are many scriptures to, to support that. That's one of the reasons why these Edomites don't want to be known as Edomites. Like Dr. Michael Quaz Brown. Okay? It's funny about these so-called white people. They want to be every you go into movies. Well, you go in the, you go in, in their movies. They make movies, they're everybody. They're the angels, they're God, they're Jesus Christ, or who they call Jesus Christ. They're the Israelites, they're everybody. Everybody great, that's them. But when it comes to the being the, well, they're even the devil. But when it comes to, they even play the role of the devil. But when it comes to being an Edomite, there's something about the Edomite. They, they don't want to be Edomites. I don't think I've seen one movie where Esau played the role of being an Edomite. You know, Esau make a movie called The Edomite. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you people out there. Let me know if, you have, if you've ever seen a movie starring, uh, you know, the so-called white man. In, in this case, starring a small hatter, so-called Jew. The movie called The Edomite. <laughs> let me know, man. Maybe, maybe I'm going off. Maybe, uh, you know, I'm not uh, privy to that information. But... You know, I've been around for a little bit. I've never seen a movie ever since. Well, I've been in the truth for a little bit. Um, I've never seen any movie with the title of, you know, with Esau starring in it with the title of The Edomite. Because they'll, they'll have you believe that. Well, like Vocab Malone said, the Edomites are done away with. That's what he said. But to this very day, he hasn't, he hasn't uh, produced any proof any plausible proof that the Edomites were done away with. The scriptures say, vocab, the scriptures say, prove all things, First Thessalonians 5 and 21. He hasn't proved that to this very day that the Edomites are done away with. But he made the statement they're done away. Anyway, reading on, it says, When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So it was the birth of Esau and Jacob. Now remember, there were separate nations, two separate nations. So there's no way uh, the Rothschilds can claim they're of the house of the house of Esau and at the same time the house of Jacob. Also, another um, citation I can bring out, besides the document, the Master Plan of Illuminated Rothschilds, uh, you have something called the Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia Judaica, the 1925 edition, I think it's page 41, either page 41 or page 44, there's a citation where it says, Edom is modern Jewry. Modern Jewry represents the, the small hatter, the so-called Jew, of which Dr. Michael Quas Brown is a small hatter. He's a so-called Jew. All right, does he know about that? Is, is, he, is he aware of that citation? From the Encyclopedia Judaica, the 1925 edition, not the revised edition, the 1925 edition, the original edition, on page 40, either 41 or 44, I believe it's page 41, there's a citation where it says, Edom is modern Jewry. And that's the small hat, the so-called Jew. So that's your second example of proof that the so-called white man indeed are the Edomites that the Bible talks about. Okay? And that white people today are descendants of Esau, also known as Edom. Well, the Rothschilds know this. And if the Rothschilds know it, the other banking families, the DuPonts, the Gettys, they know it as well. They're smarter than your average Edomite. Okay? So they know the deal. That's why Esau doesn't want that information going out there that they're the Edomites. Esau wants to, why why is Esau trying so hard to stifle stifle the truth? What, what what's so uh, scary about being an Edomite? They know. All right. As a matter of fact, in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, which we have we happen to have a copy. If you look up the definition of Edom, it says it, Edom is the only nation that is promised no mercy from God. And it also says that Edom is the scene of great future judgments. You can, you can look this up yourself in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. 
All right, look up the, the term Edom, E-D-O-M. And it gives you the definition. All right, the oldest son of Isaac, the youngest brother of Jacob, the youngest, the oldest brother of Jacob. All right. And that they are, they are, we are therefore, quote, white Edomite devils. So it's, it's not just a... Yeah, and the Edomites are the wicked. And look at the history. All you got to do is look at the history of the so-called white man. You're going to tell me he's not a devil? Just look at his history. His history speaks for itself. Um, let me get the book of Malachi, the first chapter. See, they don't like, Esau don't like when the truth come out. That's one, that's one thing. Esau is like a vampire and the truth is like a garlic. <laughs> garlic to a vampire. <laughs> You know, in those vampire movies. Um, Malachi 1 and 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build. Which, which we're in that building right now. They're trying to build a, so, something called the New World Order. And that came about in 1776. May the 1st, 1776, which is also known as May Day, by the way. And May Day means trouble, code word for trouble. You had the uh, Jesuit priest, Adam Wieshaupt, who was from Germany, just like the Rothschilds, they were from Germany, Mayim Shalbawa. Mayim Shalbawa hired Adam Wieshaupt to create something called the New World Order, which is what he did. And the symbol is the all-seeing eye with the pyramid on top, or the all-seeing eye on top of the pyramid, that's what I meant to say. That's the symbol of the New World Order. And to this very day, it's on the back of the dollar bill. That's, that's the enterprise, and the Bible speaks about their enterprise, Job 5 and 12. That's the enterprise that Esau wants to bring, complete with having everybody electronically tagged, as in chip. And that's where it's heading right now. That's why as of late, the, the MOTB, which is the chip, has been heavy in the news. You know, they're getting everybody... Uh, ready through something called gradualism. An example of that is the CBDC, the Central Bank Digital Currency. They get, that is to prep the people for the ultimate, which is to have everyone electronically tagged. And on that microchip will be your money and your history and everything. In other words, you become that microchip. That is the, uh, the hopes and the dreams and the aspirations of of Esau and their so-called New World Order, which Yahweh is coming to destroy. 1 Corinthians 15 and 23. You see? So it says, they shall build, but I will throw down. So again, that's Yahweh coming to destroy their society. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. That's why I brought out that scripture. They're the wicked. So yeah, they're a bunch of devils. And the word devil means slanderer. Also means deceiver. And that's what the so-called white man is. He's a slanderer and he's a deceiver. The board of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. You can't deny that the so-called white man is ruling this planet Earth. But he's ruling it in wickedness. That's why the majority of people are moaning on the planet Earth. Because the devil is ruling. You can't deny that. It is right here. Proverbs 29 and 2. Well, if you go in Job 9 and 24, it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who's ruling the planet Earth? By process of elimination. Is it the Chinese? Nope. Is it the Japanese? Nope. Who's ruling the planet Earth? The so-called planet Earth. The so-called white man's ruling the planet Earth. Beginning with the top banking families, which are indeed so-called white people. You can't deny this. All right? They're in charge. So it says, when the righteous are in authority... In authority of what? The planet Earth. The rulership of the planet Earth. The people rejoice. The majority of people are not rejoicing. Major, majority of people are suffering all over the world. The people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So who, are the, who is the wicked? The Edomites. And that's pursued in Malachi 1 and 4. Now, I don't know if I finish... Uh, let me just go back and read it again. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. And that lines up with what is written in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary concerning Edom. Edom will be the scene of great future judgments. Now again, you see how everything lines up? Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority of the planet earth, the people rejoice. People are not rejoicing. They're, they're suffering. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. There you go. More like the people are mourning all over the world. Why? Because the wicked is ruling. Why do we have all these problems on the planet earth? Because the so-called white man's are ruling. The wicked. The devil. Okay? That's what, he, that's what he was. That's what he was. That's what he is. Okay? He is the devil that the Bible speaks of. And the Heavenly Father created him to be the devil. And it's his time to rule the planet earth in wickedness. Let's go back to the video. Not just a ridiculous misinterpretation of scripture, but now something... Yeah, it says you. But that, that's something the devil would say. The, the scripture speaks about these devils. They go, as soon as they be born, they go, they... <laughs> oh, let, let's get that. He'll, he'll, he'll probably say the scripture I'm about to bring out, he'll probably say that's a ridiculous interpretation of scripture. Uh, what is that? Psalm 58. Psalm 58. All right. It says, uh, do you indeed, Psalm 58 and 1, do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? We all know that the so-called white man does not judge uprightly. Now, here's the point. I'm just going to jump down to the point. Well, let me re read the second verse. Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Now, who's going around starting all these wars, huh? Who's the ultimate warmonger? on the planet earth, if not the so-called white man, if not Esau. Remember, Esau's blessing was the sword. So no wonder he's all into war and bloodshed. In the book of Ezekiel, the 35th chapter, it talks about how he's not afraid to shed blood. That's in Ezekiel, the 35th chapter, because their blessing was the sword. Again, who's the one going around starting all these wars, creating all these wars? Was it not Maya Amshel Bawa who changed his name to Rothschild? Was he not the one who said, you always want to buy when blood is running in the streets? Come on, man. The, the evidence is overwhelming, Dr. Quaz Michael Brown, or Dr. Michael Quaz Brown. The evidence is overwhelming. You can't get around it. Yea, in heart you work wickedness, you weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. This is a violent man. Now, here's the point. It says, the wicked, who is Esau, Edom, are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. There you go. Now, who does that fit? All right. <laughs> Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. That takes us back to the serpent in the garden, which later would be known as Esau, Edom. The serpent-like people. You know, they say one thing and they do another. Even the so-called North American Indians knew that. That's why they said the so-called white men speak with a forked tongue. Forked tongue devils. They say one thing and they do another. The poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Meaning they're not going to listen to the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. Like uh, Michael Quaz Brown. He's an example of a deaf adder. Now what's an adder? A poisonous snake that stops his ear. He don't want to hear the truth. That's why he made that statement. The ridiculous interpretation of scripture. It says who? According to you? Are you what? You, you're the expert on the interpre interpretation of scripture? Is that you? <laughs> Just because you have your little degree? You got your little stupid title at the, at the beginning of your name, doctor? Which the word, by the way, doctor means to falsify. Dr. Michael Brown. You're a joke, man. Okay? You're that deaf adder. That stop it for air. You don't want to listen to the truth. Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers. Charming never so wise. We're the charmers. We're bringing out the truth. Just like you see the charmers playing that flute. There's a scripture where it speaks about. We have piped unto you and you have not danced. And it's talking to our people. Well you see the charmer playing that flute. And the snake gets charmed by that music. And the snake comes up and starts dancing. The charmer has power over the snake. But as soon as the music stops, the snake, what, what does the snake do? It, it does its nature. It bites. 
Well, guess what? The Edomites, they're the snakes. And, and this, this knowledge, whether they like it or not, this knowledge charms them. That's why they react to it so violently. Okay? As a matter of fact, that reminds me of a scripture, Luke. Luke 21 and uh, 19. Well, let me start at 15. Luke 21 and 15. It's actually Luke 21 and 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. This is why back in Psalm 58 it says, They will not listen to the charmers, charming never so wisely. We're the charmers, and they're the snakes. It says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. That's this knowledge, this truth that I told you earlier. If you don't have it, pretty much you're dead from the neck up. The Lord said he's going to give us a mouth and wisdom because we speak with our mouth, right? Which all your adversaries, like the Edomites, number one, our number one adversary is the Edomites. That's why you got a couple of clowns like My, uh, Michael Brown and Vocab Malone. They're our adversaries, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. See, that's why they keep coming after us. All right, because we're speaking this wisdom with our mouths. And they can't resist it, nor can they gainsay it. Every time they make a video like, like this, we shoot them down, man, with this knowledge, this truth. Not just a ridiculous misinterpretation of scripture, but now something that, that tries to castigate people is now the enemy, because Edom can be the enemy of Israel, or Edom will be judged. Ed the Edomites are the enemy of Israel. Let's prove it. Now notice he hasn't burned out, he ain't burned out one scripture yet. He just he's just in his feelings. He's just in his feelings. The book of Psalm, the 83rd chapter. And I'll I'm gonna bounce around here. Psalm 83 and 2. For lo thine enemies. Make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. Whose enemies? The enemies of Israel, the Israelites. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Who's the Lord's people? The Israelites. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Right. We've been, remember that covering cast? We're being hidden to our nationality by that covering cast. African American, blacks, you know, Puerto Rican, Mexican, you know, Dominican, all this all these names that represent the covering cast, which the Lord said he would destroy by the truth of who we really are. Anyway, that's why we're the Lord's hidden ones. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Now, who, who, who the people that did that? Well, it's going to tell you who, who, who the people are that did that. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. There you go. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom. So they're our adversaries. Now you just heard what Michael Brown said. The Edomites are the natural adversary of the Israelites. Going back to that, that struggle that Jacob had with Esau in the womb. We never liked each other. Even going back to the serpent in the garden. Okay? We've never liked each other, and we're not supposed to, because the Edomites represent wickedness. Us Israelites, we represent righteousness, and righteousness cannot like wickedness, and wickedness will not like righteousness. There's two opposing forces, two polar opposites, righteousness and wickedness, man. So there you go. So I just proved to you that the Israelites is our, is our natural enemy. Let me bring it back. You hear what Michael Quaz Brown said again. Ridiculous misinterpretation of scripture. But now something that, that tries to castigate people is now the enemy, because Edom could be the enemy of Israel, or Edom will be judged when the Messiah returns. Therefore, Edom will be judged when the Messiah returns. All right, Isaiah 63 and 1. This is almost too easy, man. Look, what's the subhead in say here? God's vengeance on the nations, especially the Edomites. And he said, this, this castigates people. No, it doesn't castigate. It doesn't castigate people. 
this knowledge of truth. It, it actually enlightens them, even enlightens you devils to your future, <laughs> to your future judgment. If you had any sense, you would listen and take heed. Your top, your top wicked elite know, they know, they know the deal. That's why they, they're going to build these, they, well, they've been building them, these bomb shelters, outer space retreats. There's a scripture in Revelation where it says, they're going to say, hide us from the wrath of the Lamb, because they know when Yahweh Shai comes, it's not for their benefit. Why do you think it is written, hide us from the wrath of the Lamb, which sitteth on the throne? Who is that? That's a metaphor for Yahweh Shai, the one they call Jesus Christ, because they know when Yahweh Shai comes back, it's game over for their kingdom. They know this. As a matter of fact, Herod knew. You go back more than 2,000 years ago, Herod knew the deal. That's why when Yahweh Shai came on the scene as a baby, what was Herod trying to do? Destroy that baby. Because he knew the deal. Anyway, Isaiah 63, 63 and 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? Dyed garments represent the much bloodshed that Yahweh Shai is going to bring with him. Isaiah 66 and 15. The slain of the Lord shall be many. Why is the Lord going to be so angry? He's going to be angry for what the nations, in particular the nation of Edom, has done to his people, the Israelites, beginning with the elect. That's why the scripture starts off with, who is this that cometh from Edom? It specifically says Edom. Who are the Edomites today? I already told you who they are. So when Yahweh Shai comes, he's coming with that vengeance, man, for the Edomites, i.e. slavery, cargo slave sh ships, what the Edomites did to us Israelites the Lord's chosen people. So the Edomites, you're, you're screwed, man. If you're an Edomite, you're screwed. And I got, I, look, I got some, uh, I got something to tell you about the Edomites. The Edomites can look like so-called black people as well. Okay, you got so-called black people that are actually Edomites because their seed, they, their seed was mingled with the Edomites. That's how deep this thing is. Okay. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? The modern-day Bozra represents America. America is this modern-day Bozra. If you know anything about the Edomite history, Bozra was a capital city located in Edom. Bozra. Okay? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. And then as we read on, it's talking about the judgment that the Lord is going to bring upon the Edomites. So what is Michael Brown talking about? Sure. But now something that, that tries to castigate people is now the enemy, because Edom can be the enemy of Israel, or Edom will be... Pursuant to Psalms, the 83rd chapter, Edom is the enemy of Israel. I just read it to you. Judged when the Messiah returns, therefore... Again, in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, look up the term Edom. Edom is the scene of great future judgments. I read to you one of those future judgments, Isaiah 63 and 1. Matter of fact, when you look up that term Edom in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, it gives you some precepts. Guess, one, guess what one of the scriptures are? One of the scriptures is Isaiah the 63rd chapter, beginning at the first verse. So, so check that out. All the white Edomite devils will be judged. So it's, it's not just... All the white Edomite devils. You're not white. In different sh shades of red. The Edom does not mean white. Edom means red. You can go read it for yourself. Genesis 25 and 25. He was called Edom. It's a case of Norman Omen, which is Latin for name prediction. He, the child was called Edom because the, the blood showed forth through his translucent skin. He was born without pigment. And the Lord put that mark on him to show that he's the wicked. That's why that mark was left on him. That was the same mark that Cain received. When the Lord put a mark on him, Genesis uh, 4 and 17, or is it 4 and 15, where the scriptures say the Lord put a mark on Cain. That was The Lord stripped him from his pigment. That same mark was put on Miriam for a period of time for her disobedience, for her wickedness. She received that mark. Numbers 12 and 10, I believe. All right? A myth and a lie, but it's it's something that is pernicious. Says you, a myth and a lie. It's an ugly. So the first... No, what's ugly is the truth. The truth is ugly to you. Because like the Bible says, you devils are forges of lies. 
So anyone who's a creator of lies or, or perpetually pushes lies, of course the truth is going to be ugly to that person. That's what's ugly. This truth, which is ugly to you. Problem with this is the scripture doesn't say that Esau was white. It, and, and You're right. It said Esau was red. Genesis 25 and 25. But see, that concept, uh, you so-called white people, you created that concept. You started calling yourself white around the early 1600s. Okay? Let me see if I can get to the part in this video where the brother brings that in. Point of fact, according to black Hebrew Israelites, his parents, Isaac and Rebecca, were both black, as well as their parents going back. They weren't black. They were different shades of brown. They were a shade of brown. And it is quite possible for two so-called black people to bring a child into the world that looks like a so-called white person. Okay? That's very possible. Years ago, there was a story in Jet Magazine where you had this couple. I think they were living in Africa. And they had twins. One of them was looking normal, had the same complexion of the parents, and the other one looked like a so-called white person. And they were both of that father's seed, so to speak. All right? So it's very possible. But that boggles, boggles the mind of Michael Brown, because he ain't too bright anyway. And his twin brother, Jacob, was black. Let me see if I can find it. Furthermore, Luke 1 and 37, it is, nothing is, is impossible to the Heavenly Father, as it is written. Twin brother is black. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, we we'll start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Arachach, Wadash. They'll want us to the elder apostles and bishops of the great Muslim rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the hopefully elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad. Now, first things first, Dr. Brown. You're not white. And uh, Esau wasn't right. white. There's no such thing as white people. You're red. You know, yeah, like you said, there's no such thing as white people. It's a construct created in 1681. Let's see if I can find it. You're red. Not sure if you know this fact. Are you aware that the term white as a race was a man-made construct, an invention? Mm -hmm. Did you not know that you didn't start calling yourselves white until the 1600s. That's right. Now, I remember the elder uh, Malcolm uh, in Chicago brought this fact out years ago. All right, there was a, a, a woman. Um, I believe her name was uh, Jacqueline, right? She had did a book called the, the, the Birth of a White Nation, The Invention of White People. Now, I'm going to back this brother up. Something that I found. It is right here. Well, this is one example. This is from The Guardian. Uh, what does it say here? The invention of whiteness. The long history of a dangerous idea. Before the 17th century, that would be the 1600s, people did not think of themselves as belonging to something called a white race. But once the idea was invented, 
it quickly began to reshape the modern world. Now that's that covering cast that I read about in Isaiah 25 and 7, which the Lord said he going to destroy. The covering cast of all people. That concept, that white people construct, that's part of that covering cast the Lord said he going to destroy by bringing out the truth. The, the simple truth is there's no such thing as white people. That's the simple truth. It was a construct created. Let me see what else I can find. Look at that. The History of White People in America, Episode 1, How America Invented Race. The invention of the white race. Let's, let's take a look at that. So the truth is out there if you, if, if you want to find it. But Michael Brown is not about the truth. He's about demonization. That's why he calls us black Hebrew Israelites. Uh, this is from Verso. It says, the invention of the white race, the origin of racial oppression. When the first Africans arrived in Virginia in 1619, there were no white people there, nor according to colonial records, would there be for another 60 years? Yeah, because uh, the concept didn't come about till 1681. Historical debate about the origin of racial slavery has focused on the status of the Negro in 17th century Virginia and Maryland. However, as Theodore W. Allen argues in his ma ma magisterial, 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 work, magisterial work, magisterial work, what needs to be studied is the transformation of English, Scottish, Irish, and other European colonists from their various statuses as servants, tenants, planters, or merchants into a single new all-inclusive status, that of whites, or as in white people. Now, they mentioned English, Scottish, Irish, and other Europeans. Now, among the English, Scottish, and Irish, you had Jakes. A lot of them were Jakes. A lot of, a lot of them were Israelites. Okay? Because the, the first English, Scottish, and Irish, they were so-called black. They were, they were people of a, a darker hue. I forgot which individual described them as being swathy. Swathy means... Uh, the color of a so-called black person, swafi, a dark-skinned person. This is the key to the paradox of American history, see? A history that's not taught, by the way, of a democracy resting on race assumptions. So there you go. Here's another uh, example of proof that white people was a construct created Here's another one from World Channel, The History of White People in America. The white race was invented by rich Virginians in 16, 1676 in the aftermath of a populous rebellion of impoverished, indentured, and enslaved Africans. Here's this uh, 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 piece of information here, aeon.com. How white people were invented by a playwright in 1613. So as early as 1613. Really that concept came about in the 1600s. But by 1681 it was made. It was made um, a class of people. Uh, this is from Wikipedia. White people. White is a racialized classification of people. And a skin color specifier. Which they're not white. They're red generally used for people of European ancestry, although the definition can vary. Okay, so, I 
read some of these uh, examples to you to show you that before the 1600s, there was no such thing as white people. Let's get back to the video. White people. All right. And she basically brought out the history on how they grouped themselves, created a classification for themselves by naming themselves white. Mm -hmm. And they went with that ever since. Now, real quick. Yeah, and later in the video, he reads, he actually reads a citation from one of, one of those uh, publications. Let me see if I can find it. 25, verse 24. And the first came out this interpreting, you know, why is he being compared in or usually they would dye it red. He was born translucent, the better complexion, you're really red. Came out red. Melanin. Prophet Joshua. So all you saw was redness when he went. The only way you could be white, white, is if you got leprosy. Why that came out his brother. Describe how Jacob looked at people, which you're not white. You're going to have albinos. You're going to have our children come out any complexion, no matter uh, if the two parents are dark skinned or not. Facts. Because we have, now is a bunch of just a group of uh, Edomites, a bunch of red people in the earth. They, well, they have to have come from brown people. That, uh, everybody was brown. Yeah, we're, we're, we come in different colors, man. That we're speckled. Color. We're, we're like a variety, man. Plus, we didn't, you know, uh, intermingle with uh, other women of Mexico. But getting back to you, Esau, all right, you're not white. That that was a man-made construct. As a matter of fact, let me pull this up real quick. Okay, here it is right here. <laughs> listen, listen good. And it says, uh, this is from medium.com, and it says, White History Month, Day 13. White people were invented in 1861. This may sound shocking, for surely white people inhabited countries across Europe for hundreds if not thousands of years, right? Nope. The idea to create white people to group distinct European nationalities together into a single group had not been done until 8, 1681 in Maryland. See? What happened in 18, it's like 1681 to cause colonial lawmakers to create a classification of people who had never considered themselves a group before. What inspired them to invent white people? To understand this, we need to revisit history and specifically the scholarship of Dr. Jacqueline Batalora's groundbreaking book, Birth of a White Nation, Invention of White People and its Relevance Today. So that's the book. All right. Uh, the, the scholarship of Dr. Jacqueline Batalora. Batalora. The name of the book is Birth of a White Nation, The Invention of White People and Its Relevance Today. All right, Dr. Michael Brown, Vocab Malone. There's no such thing as white people. That was a modern day construct created a little more than 500 years ago. Okay? There you go. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you were edified on to the next one.